Welcome to the first part of lecture four. We're going to be talking about tangents. The title is tangents, or is it derivatives? The idea that the derivative is the tangent to the curve is one that is really beaten into your head in a calculus course. I don't really know that I need to go into it in great detail. The book does spend a fair amount of time discussing details about exactly how you would calculate a tangent. And what we have for you in this picture on the left is some generic function f of x and then some tangent line to f of x drawn at the point a where the function takes the value f of a. And that would be the red line here. And one thing that I think is perhaps not quite so familiar with people is that this tangent, which is related to the derivative, we calculate the slope it is equal to the derivative at the point a f of a, the derivative of f of x. The key point is that this picture shows you that the tangent is the straight line that best approximates the curved function at that particular point. Oftentimes that notion is not so well conveyed in a calculus course. So if I wanted to approximate my function by a straight line at any point, the tangent is the best straight line to use to approximate the function at that point. And that's an important fact that is worth remembering if you didn't recognize that when you studied these things in your Calculus 1 class. Tangents are also, of course, related to some extent to minimization and maximization problems because we know that we have to set the derivative equal to zero to get a maximum or a minimum to a function. And that corresponds to having a situation where the tangent line is horizontal. All right, so let me just go through a simple minimization problem. Uh, we're going to illustrate it, but actually the problem we're going to look at is a maximization problem. It turns out most problems of this type tend to be called minimization problems, simply because that's the term that is preferred by the mathematicians. So what is the problem that we're going to solve? We're going to take a fixed perimeter P, and we're going to ask what shape rectangle has the largest area for a fixed perimeter. And I've drawn some potential rectangles for you on the left. Now, those of you that are really comfortable with symmetry arguments, and certainly at the stage that you are in your physicist careers, I was not comfortable at all with those. Whenever a professor said, well, by symmetry we can say this, I would be like, what in the heck is this person talking about? So if that is not you and you actually are very comfortable with their symmetry arguments then what you might reason is the only rectangle that is special is the square and so if i'm trying to find something special about rectangles it's highly likely the answer is going to be a square because why would it prefer one oblong shape to another oblong shape and the square is the only one that has this particular property that is not oblong and indeed, that turns out to be correct, but we actually want to see the proof of that. So let's let the length of one of the edges, or I'm sorry, the length of the rectangle be L, and then the width of the rectangle will be half of the perimeter minus L. Be sure you understand that, because the perimeter is 2L plus 2W. So the area is just the length times the width, so that's going to be P over 2 minus L, which is the width times the length L. And then we maximize that by taking the derivative with respect to L. L is the only variable that we have left in the problem. When I take that derivative, I will get P over 2 minus L. That comes from taking the derivative with respect to the second term in the factor. And then I get a minus L by taking a derivative with respect to the first term in the factor. The net result of that is that I get P over 2 minus 2L two is equal to 0. Or solving that, I will find L is equal to P over 4. And if I take L equals P over 4 and substitute back into the formula for W, I find W is equal to P over 2 minus P over 4, which also is equal to P over 4. And so I find L equals W, and that is, of course, the definition of what a square is. So we can prove very directly by using this notion of a minimization problem or a maximization problem by setting a derivative equal to zero that the maximal area for any rectangle with a fixed perimeter will be the situation when the rectangle is chosen to be a square.